Hey everybody, welcome to Sally's Recipe of the Week, brought to you by Doris Italian Market and Bakery. Welcome to Casa de Mo and Sally. I'm very excited about tonight's recipe because, you know, we got cold weather coming, so we're going to make a beef stew, just a good old-fashioned beef stew that, you know, cooks for hours in the oven, not on top of the stove, in the oven. And hi Mo, Mo's with us, barely, I just woke him up. I was napping so good. good. When you oh, woke me so up. Sorry. Hi there, Curtis. Hello. Curtis, I know you're not a big soup person. Are you a stew person? Not particularly. No? No. Mm, I might have to change your mind. Okay. Okay. So I, I, I had to jump ahead, you guys, because literally this recipe cooks for like three hours. So I don't think we all want to spend three hours. So I did a few things ahead, but the complete recipe is on our website 1055online.com all the steps and don't be freaked out by how many ingredients there are most of it you already have probably in your pantry or in your fridge and um it's so easy it's just a little time consuming that's all we have to say hello to dawn hi dawn she was the first one to join us also d stokes hi, dana. dana stokes laura sinclair is joining us hi, Kara. It's her first time checking in from Port St. Lucie. She lives up in the Pizzle now. Okay. Yeah, and then there's uh, Chris Picks. Hi, Chris. Hello, guys. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Well, Laura, was it your idea that because uh, I think it was I think it was you who said on Facebook Live maybe last last week or earlier this week that I should do a soup, a stew, or chili. I used to make chili like once a week, but I'm really starting to get into these stews. And um, normally we start off with our cheese and wine pairing, but I just wanted to jump ahead, like I said, because this is kind of an involved recipe. I went ahead, I don't know if you guys can see this, and this is boneless beef chuck roast, and you're going to get a piece of meat that's like about that big. I had to split this recipe because I want to show you how it's done, and then I wanted to show you the finished product. So I went ahead and um, seasoned the beef with salt and pepper. You get the big it's about, it's about like the, the length of a, I don't know, a loaf of bread, maybe a little bit shorter. And I, I slice it into four pieces. So um, I've already cooked two of them. But this was just browned in some vegetable oil after you season it really nicely with salt and pepper. And then you set it and let it rest. And it's just browned on both sides, okay? It's not cooked through. It's, I mean, it's, it's, very, it's very rare or very raw, I should say, in the center. But you just want that brown because that's flavor. That gives it that really good flavor. Uh, some people cut it into cubes and then brown it. Um, this is, I think this is easier and it's, the flavor is just the same. So that's what we've done here. And then you're just going to set it aside and let it rest. We all know that's really important. Hello to Linda Brooks. Hi, Linda Brooks. This might be a Linda Brooks approved recipe. I was going to say, it's this a might, stew. I just might have cracked her on this one. Linda, and then we've got uh, Laura said that, yeah, cold weather foods. Uh, this is cold weather food. Cheryl says uh, she's saying hi from Illinois. She's going to be down here uh, in Marco in two weeks. Nice. Karen Weagle has joined us. Hi, joining us. Hi, Wendy. Pamela Hudson says hi. Hi. Okay, so before we do our little wine tasting with the cheese, what I want to show you guys, what I have over here, you can stay right there, though. So I uh, use my Dutch oven to brown the chuck roast. And there's a little bit of oil left in there and you see all that nice flavoring down there what we're going to do is in this dutch oven we're going to add some just regular button mushrooms you know the little white mushrooms that, that you always see okay are we still on this camera no now we're on this camera okay okay so and all i did was i i didn't pull the stem out i just trimmed the stem where's my knife i just trimmed the stem and a quarter of it simple as that and then we're going to toss them into all this deliciousness to let them brown. You do want to turn down the heat because you have a nice sear on the meat. You want to turn down the heat because you don't want to burn the mushrooms. So this takes a, a few minutes. So that's why I wanted to get the mushrooms started. And then we can go check out our wine and cheese. These, these, little, these Dutch ovens are the best, but they can get a little hot. So I'm just going to put this back on some a little bit lower heat and let these mushrooms brown. Wendy says she might try this recipe when she gets back from Daytona. Uh, Linda Linda says she loves beef stew, so she's in. I did see a message on, uh, I don't know, if, did you put something on Instagram? I did. I think our friend Pan, P, 
Pam Crosby said she got the ingredients for beef stew, so she was going to give it a shot because uh, she's in Baltimore, and she's going to be really cold this weekend. Hi, Jamie. Like I said, I just, I just browned the meat in a little bit of olive oil, and if your pan seems a little dry, you can always have, I mean, not olive oil, uh, vegetable oil. You can always add a little more as you need it. And, but the mushrooms will give off some wetness. But remember, don't put salt on the mushrooms until they're cooked. Remember that tip? Don't put salt on your mushrooms. Don't put salt on the mushrooms until they're cooked. All right, so let's let those guys get a little brown and now let's have some wine and cheese. Hi, Andrea and Rita. Thanks for joining us. All right, wine and cheese. Yeah. So, hey, Curtis, guess what we found today? At Doris. A million dollars. No. No, we look. We found Martha's chard. Oh, that's the it's, one we was talking about. We were just talking about Martha Stewart and uh, her wine. It's a Chardonnay. Uh, she says that it's okay to put ice in your wine now, and she says most winemakers are saying that as well. Look, Look at the cork. It's Martha Stewart. <laughs> Almost thought that was Celine Dion's. <laughs> <laughs> and Martha record, Stewart. Mo is not a big Chardonnay fan, but this is not one of those heavy, buttery loaded down chardonnay no it, it was actually this was actually in the wine machine today so we had a chance to uh taste it, got to sample it before we bought it. yeah and so um i said does it taste because she was saying it's not your typical chardonnay and so cheers cheers so we thought we would give it a try that's good it is. I don't like a Chardonnay that's too buttery or oaky, oaky or, or anything, but that's it's good. It's light and crisp for a Chardonnay. By the way, I, not to, you know, I am doing double duty here, so wow. we, can't, we can't leave out the Honda Classic Ambassador's Glass and the red wine. I'm doing double. What kind of? You woke up from a nap and went straight to drinking. Look at this. This is a shame. What did, what did you say? What, what's a shame? You went. Well, you woke up from a nap, went straight to drinking. You're drinking two different types of wines. It's for the show. a shame. Okay. I had to induce that nap some way. So, um, went to door. I thought this would be nice with the Chardonnay. Um, this is mozzarella that we got at Doors, just little mm -hmm. mozzarella balls. And I got some fresh herbs. I got some thyme. I got oregano. In my garden, I have chives and parsley. And I just rolled these little uh, mozzarella balls in some fresh herbs. What do you think, Mo? Too little? Nice balls. <laughs> no. Those yep. fresh herbs with the crisp Chardonnay. There's a little dill in there. Um, what else about them? Fennel. Mmm. Ooh, that does go well with the wine. It's nice and fresh and light. Mm. What do you guys think about the name? Martha's Chard. Not, Are you supposed to say Chard or Shard? How did you pronounce it? Shard, like Chardonnay? Are you supposed to say that or is it Chard? No, it's, I'm sure it's chard, like chard. Am I saying it the wrong way? You said chard. Did I say chard? Oh, yeah. Said Martha's chard. I still don't, I mean, I like the wine, but I don't like the name. Martha's chard, okay. Was, was How I did I not... I'm pulling the cork out, I see her face come up. How did I not pick up on that? Martha's You slow a lot of times, that's all. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> right, be well, be nice see. to me, Curtis. We're, we're getting the couple's massage together. <laughs> Valentine's. All right, I need you to come over here. Pick your pick your poison. Oh, jeez, which one do I want? Well, we okay. are going to have some red with the stew. You asked him to make a decision, so you know we're going to be here for another thirty yeah. minutes, um, right? We're actually cooking with Shut this up. with this wine. <laughs> Enjoy the wine, this wine with the stew. I got that at um, at Doris today mm -hmm. as well. It's mm -hmm. just a uh, it's a like twelve, thirteen bucks yeah. bottle of Chardonnay. It's good. How much was the Martha's wine? I think it's thirteen dollars. You can see how the the um, mushrooms are wet. That's because they're 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 working their way down. So what we're going to add to our mushrooms, and you're going to use a just a button mushrooms, an eight ounce container, and then we're going to add to it frozen pearl onions that I've thawed. You can buy fresh ones, guys, but let me tell you, you'll be peeling them and for hours. These are just frozen pearl onions, and um, the recipe calls for a couple of carrots that you peel and cut into nice little chunks. Okay, so we're going to add that into here. In case you guys are just joining us, uh, she's making a beef stew.
stew. Mm -hmm. In the oven. This is not a stovetop beef stew. It's in the oven. Yeah, we're going to cook. It's going to go low and slow in the oven for, well, the first part is an hour and a half, and then the second part is about 45 minutes. Hi, Pam. Yeah, so you can get the recipe at 1055online.com. Go to Doris Italian Markets. Get your ingredients. Thank you, Doris, for sponsoring Sally's Recipe of the Week. We certainly appreciate that. Okay, so while these guys start cooking away, let's put together some some of the flavor for the sauce. Okay, so Mo, why don't you come right? Where do you want me? You can do this in a bowl, in a mixing bowl, if you want, or you can do it it, uh... in a blender. Um, Yeah, come over here. Over here? Okay. Very close to the pot there. Oh, yeah, that scares you. I don't want to burn my baby arms. Okay. Um, it's interesting when you make beef stew, you think you need to use beef broth, right? This is chicken. Um, I've also made it with vegetable, or you can make it with beef. Some people think that uh, chicken broth or stock is a better quality than beef. I really don't know, but I just know that. I made it with vegetable last time because that's what I had open in the fridge and it was delicious, right? You tried it. Yes. Okay. So tonight we're going to use chicken. Um, the recipe calls for four cups and I, I'm putting it in a blender because it makes it really easy. Uh, then tomato paste, uh, three tablespoons, and I just eyeball it, you guys. But again, I'm only doing half the recipe. And cornstarch to thicken it, just about. Well, for the full recipe, two tablespoons, I'm only going to use one. And that helps thicken everything up. Uh, Here we go. Tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. This really just adds to the flavor. There you go. Soy sauce. About a tablespoon. And... Fish sauce. I know not everybody's a fan of fish sauce or they don't want to buy it just for one recipe. If you don't, I understand. This used then a, about a tablespoon and a half and a tablespoon and a half, okay? If you don't want to use the fish sauce. But I like fish sauce. I use it all the time, but I, I also cook a lot of Asian food. About a tablespoon of that. Hi, Lourdes. Marzigliano. How are you? All right. So all Hi, Milton. Blender. What did you say, Curtis? I said hi, Milton. He's he's fussing. Nobody said hi to him. So I'm oh, saying is hi, Milton there? Oh, well, I can't I can't see the comments because I'm over here on this side. So hello, Milton. Milton. It's that easy. Hmm? Hi, Milton. Hi, Milton. Milton says it's time for me to get a haircut. All right. So that's that's that. That's all you have to do. Now let's go back to the veggies in the pot. We're getting nice and brown. Hot veggies. Yeah, and now that the veggies have cooked down and getting a little brown, and the mushrooms are cooked down, now we can actually put a little bit of salt in there. You want to season as you go. Uh, obviously, you don't want to oversalt it because you can always add a little more salt at the end. And uh, I, for, I ran out of black peppercorns. This is empty. So thank goodness I had this backup delicious Penzi's California seasoned pepper that um, Roland gave me. And it works, it's really good. But normally I, I like fresh cracked black pepper, but this is excellent. It's, it, thank you, Roland, because I did not have any more pepper and I forgot to buy some at Doris today. Roland saves the day. He saved the day, he sure did. Hi, Michael Tanner. Hi, Michael. All right, so now that this is nice and delicious, oops. Those look good, 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 good. Maybe next week we should make ribs in honor of Michael Tanner, who broke some ribs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we could do that. <laughs> All right. So now you want to take these out. All right. Now, okay, I have a question mm-hmm. for people who are joining us. Uh, this is uh, just a, a beef stew. Just a good old-fashioned beef stew. There's nothing. Is this fancy. a difficult dish to no. make? No. It's just time consuming. Time consuming. But so. you know what? When the weather's crappy and you're stuck inside anyway, yeah. and then you get to do this, and um, you know, I always prep all my vegetables and stuff ahead. You can do this, and the house smells so good. And okay, so we're just gonna set this aside. Linda, we gonna send you those vegetables, uh, so you can have them. Yeah, Linda's like, can I just make this without the vegetables? Um, I guess so. <laughs> she, she eats around them. 
you do need to do this part. What, what I've got here is a, a, an onion that I just sliced in half. Some people don't even bother to peel it. I peel it. I don't want the, the flaky skin in there. Pop that in there, cut side down. It, when you're making the full recipe, you'll use two. A couple of stalks of celery, carrot, and then, again, some people don't peel the garlic. I do because when you're fishing all this stuff out, sometimes the garlic is hard to find. So I just leave it in because Mel and I like garlic, and I don't care if I eat an entire clove of garlic that's been roasting for three hours. I think it's delicious. So we're just going to let these guys brown just like we did the other. Again, this is just to release some flavor. That's pretty much the reason we're doing this. And remember, we've got our beef resting. I, I already did that. It takes about five minutes aside. And you want to sear it and then let it rest before you slice it up and throw it into the pot. All right. So normally I would let this cook for about mm, four or five minutes, but we'll just go ahead and take the next step. And the next step is wine. This is, what are we, what's the red you're drinking? It's a Cabernet okay. called Cabernet, Light Horse. Merlot. Um, use a wine that you would drink, but it, it doesn't have to be an expensive wine, but don't use something that you would never drink. Boy, that means the pot. I'm going to turn up the heat just a little Bear bit. says garlic is good for you. Yes. I would agree. I love garlic. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm scraping all those brown bits off the bottom. Now turn up the heat a little bit because we want the wine to kind of cook off a little. Just like that. Yummy, yummy, yummy. See, and what's going to happen is we're going to cook. We're going to get all this going, and then we're going to stick all this with the meat in the oven at 300 degrees. It's low and slow, you guys. And we're going to do that for about an hour and a half. And then we'll fish these out and then toss them because this is just to add flavor. This is a, this Well, we're not eating that. No, no, you don't eat this. So that seems like a waste. It's not. It, it adds a lot of flavor. Just scrape that. Curtis, out. are you still there? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Again, I'm just gonna kind of rush the process a little bit. So you wanna you wanna let this cook out probably it takes a few more minutes, but I'm thinking about changing my radio name to low and snow. Low, low <laughs> and slow. Low and slow. I don't hate it. Remember the stock mixture that we had with mm -hmm. the, I use chicken broth, you can use beef, you can use vegetable. We've got the cornstarch in there to thicken it. We're gonna add all that right into the pot. I use a blender, it makes it fast and quick and fun. All right, so we're gonna let this come up to a simmer. So let's go and cut the meat. You want me on the other side, or uh, it doesn't matter wherever you want to be. Okay, boneless beef chuck roast. That normally comes like this. I sliced it in about four, and then we just browned it. That's it. Oh, and also these little juices that are there, pour them into your stew. It's delicious. So just take a nice sharp knife, and like I said, it's it's not cooked. It's rare. We're just browning it for the flavor. Look at that. Because it's going to cook some more. Oh, it's going to be in the oven for two hours total or at least. So don't cook it all the way. You see everybody. how nice and rare that is? Yeah. Okay. And I'm just going to cut mine into little cubes. And also, guys, if you get a fatty cube, you know, like that, don't be tempted to pull it off because that's flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, yeah. hey, that's the part of stew. When you're eating it and you get a piece with some fat on it, you suck on the fat and you spit it out. She looked at me when she said fatty. I did not. I think she did. I saw it a little bit. Uh, yeah, she did. The she camera's did. not on her face. I saw it. But yeah, you could tell. Okay, remember we just seasoned it <laughs> with salt and pepper and seared it in the Dutch oven about four or five minutes aside. So you get a nice, nice crust, nice flavor. Look at that. Look at that. Mm. Yeah, Laura says get a good shot of the murder knife. <laughs> yeah, but there you go. It's going to be featured on CNN. Mm -hmm. Linda says they're having wings and beer battered onion rings for uh, her daughter's birthday. Oh, nice. And, nice. and also cupcakes and ice cream. And she well, said thank you for the bir happy birthday song. 
Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah happy so here's, birthday. Here's another really fatty piece. You, you probably won't want, you don't want to eat that, but you don't want to throw it out because it adds so much flavor. All right. Gordon wants to know if you're going to use brawny paper towels to clean up since, yeah. you know, I'm the <laughs> brawny man. You are the brawny She's man. using, my brain is scrawny. <laughs> Didn't somebody say that on Facebook? Yeah, I'm sure. All right. <sighs> All right, one more. But remember, we let this rest. And also, oh, another thing, uh, remember, let this meat come to room temperature before you throw it into the Dutch oven. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't want to put cold meat in a hot pan. It seizes up. And you want to give it a good rest. This ah. is low and slow in the morning. Don't put cold meat in a hot pan. That's right. I'm just going to pop it right <laughs> back on to my sheet. Curtis's bed. new name, low and slow in the morning. Uh, hey, this is low and slow. <laughs> Putting your cold meat in a hot pan. <laughs> low and slow, got a life hack for you. Don't put mm. cold meat in a hot pan. All-purpose flour. Just mm. all-purpose flour, um, and you're just going to sprinkle it <laughs> over the beef. This also will help thicken the broth, the stew. Totally didn't see this coming. No? No. Some people don't use the cornstarch and rely solely on flour. I don't use as much flour, um, and then you just want to toss it. And since the beef is already really well seasoned, you don't have to worry about seasoning your flour. Yeah, that's it. All right, now let's go back over to the Dutch oven. Maybe Curtis, maybe you should do uh, your own uh, request show at night. Low and slow. Low and slow, what you want. Low and slow with a quiet storm. All right, so these guys go right in here with all those aromatics. All that good. Seems like there's a lot of components to this recipe. Yeah. It's I mean it's stew, you know? Just so worth it. Low and slow. Where do you put your cold meats? <laughs> <laughs> you <can. laughs> okay, so since we're not gonna sit here for an hour and a half, I'll just explain to you guys the rest of it, okay? Pretty easy. 300 degree oven and bottom rack on the bottom is the lowest rack. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do is put your lid, well, slide this into the oven and then take the lid, move it to the side, take it, give it a little bit. Okay. Move it to the side. Honestly, don't try to put it in with this, with this on the side. Uh, disaster. Yeah. Put it on and, and then move it to the side, mm -hmm, move it to the side. And it's going to be in your oven at 300 degrees for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. But at fi after five minutes, take a peek at it because you want you want the stew to be bubbling just slightly, not over bubbling, but just a slight bubble, like a very low simmer. What I had to do was I had it at 300 and it wasn't simmering. But then I turned it up to 325 and it started simmering. Then I put it back down to 300 and it kept simmering. Okay, so just just keep an eye on it. All these instructions, right, are on. Yeah, I know okay. it seems like a lot. But yeah, it's, it's it's really not that bad. Okay, so you're wearing my ass out. Well, I can say the same. Okay. I, I'm holding the camera. What am I doing? Okay, so <laughs> here's where we're have to gonna pretend. All right. Okay. Um, what you're gonna do is, hour and a half later, you're gonna take this out of the oven, put it on the stove, mm -hmm. and fish out. Your aromatics. You're just gonna fish out. Well, you can't. No, I'm supposed to fish them out now. Yeah, after an hour and a half. Well, it's that, take it out. Okay? okay, but that you're pretending. Yes, I'm pretending. Take all these guys don't out. Don't be, don't be wasting food. And like I said, by this time the um, garlic can be hard to find, but you can fish it out as well. Okay. Okay, we got it. So you've taken all your aromatics out. Fish out the aromatics. The meat is still in there. Okay. Yeah. And you're gonna want to. You got that low and slow. Low and slow loves aromatics. Uh, fresh thyme that I bought about you know a few sprigs. Mm -hmm. You can toss the whole thing in there. You can peel the leaves off. It's up to you. Or uh, last time I made this, I didn't have fresh thyme, so I just used ground thyme, mm -hmm. and it was fine. So if you don't it's, have it, that's fine. 
Low and slow says it's brown time. Mm-hmm. Right, low and slow says so just get some weeds out of the yard, put them in. <laughs> and you're gonna add these, your onions and uh, mushrooms and carrots in after the after mm-hmm. after you fish out the after aromatics. Fish, yes, this is after these. This is where it, it, it takes way too long. So we're just that's what yeah, we're just. Yeah, and, and then you're gonna add Yukon gold potatoes. Mm-hmm. They've been peeled and just cut into little chunks. You're gonna toss them in there too. Okay, so you've got your thyme. You've got the veggies, the mushrooms, and the coral onions, and then you're going to put the potatoes in there, and you're going to, once again, put it back in the oven, slide that over, 45 minutes. Okay. It's you, all... Is everybody with me? It's, well, it's all in the directions, right? Okay. And then you're, when you take that out, set it back on the stove. If you don't think that your sauce, the saucy part of the stew, is thick enough, you can simmer a little bit on the stove and let it thicken up if you want to. And right before you're going to eat it, you're going to throw in some, some frozen peas. Mine are thawed. They don't have to be thawed. If they're frozen, trust me, it only takes a couple of minutes for them to, to cook. But you want to put the peas in very, very last. That's very important. Okay? So, that's how in here, do the magic of television. <laughs> Not really. Laura says, I need to go drink my wine. Laura, I agree. Look at that. That's the finished product. That right is there. it. Yes. Look at that. That is just good old beef stew. Let's bring it over here, Mo. Come on around. Mm. Where's my wine? Oh, here you go. <laughs> which one? Yeah, which one do I want? Do I want red? You or want, do I want red with the stew. Oh, okay. Let me go. Mine. That's not mine. It's not oh, yours. Not. Hey, calm down. <laughs> I'm drinking Martha's Shard. That's the Martha Stewart wine that we talked about. And when you repeat this on the stove pot, just low and slow again. Don't don't rush it. Uh, low and slow. You hear that? Low and slow. That's my tagline. Never rush it. Never rush it. It's low and slow. Just go blow and slow. <laughs> low and slow. <laughs> low and slow. Don't rush it. Hey, hey baby, just slow it down. Look at that, low and slow. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. Yeah, some stuff. if you're nice to me, I'll bring you some. He, okay. Oh, uh, he's like, oh, I don't care. Yeah. All right, back over here. He, he's like, I got bunt cakes to eat tomorrow. I got bunt cakes and Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're gonna eat healthy tomorrow morning. All right. I'm gonna have this with some red wine. Again, there is uh, a cup of this wine. Right in the stew. Hit me. All right. Yeah, there is some what you asked for. What's that? You said, you said hit me. I said be careful what you asked for. That's true. I got a big knife. Right. <laughs> now, mm. I like to, I like to, I'm weird. I like to serve stew with a fork and a spoon because sometimes you might want to just, you know, stab that beautiful potato. Mm. Mary Lou says it looks great. Let me tell you all. It's cold this weekend. You're not going to be wanting to go anywhere anyway. Oh, well, that's a good idea, Bear. Hey, Bear wants to know, could you use rice? Yeah, you could pour this over rice. Sure. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, you might you might want to dial down on the potatoes if you do that. It might be a little starchy, but absolutely. Look at that. Look at how rich and succulent that sauce is. Uh, low and slow is succulent. Low and slow mm-hmm. loves the succulents. Yeah, he, he loves the succulent. He takes care of the succulents. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, pearl onion. That's a low and slow pearl onion. Mm-hmm. Like a shakaroni pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not a shakaroni pizza. It's not a shakaroni. All right, Mo. This oh, is, is it my turn? Mm-hmm. This is for you. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. Give it a shot. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I probably should have said before you, you know, finish it up, you might want to give your your broth a taste to make sure it doesn't need any more salt or, mm. or more pepper. I think that's good. Yeah. That's really, really good. Now, mm. do you serve this with any bread or crackers or? Sure, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I just thought we had enough going on. I mean, yeah. No, I was, there just, was a lot. <laughs> I was just asking. You yeah. Know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and was it Bear who said over rice? Over rice. Good idea, uh, Bear. Cauliflower rice, if you, if you like that. 
Well, you just lost Linda Brooks. She's like, uh, how dare you? Or you just eat it just like it is. Yeah. The meat is so, so tender. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yep, you can get the recipe at 1055online.com. Again, go to Doris Italian Market, six locations in South Florida. We were just there today. I will tell you, tasted some good wine. Uh, had me a slice of pizza and a garlic knot and then a nap. Now, people use different types of meat for, you know, beef stew. But I, I, I thought this was really good. And if you have any questions, the butchers at Doris are really, really helpful. So... Again, you used what type of meat? Uh, boneless beef chuck. Mm, what else could you use? Um, that's all I've ever used. So. Okay, but I, you. I know other people. I'm sure other people have other recipes that use other cuts of meat. Okay. But it's, it's just. I mean, it's got enough fat to make the stew. Yeah, you need some fat on there. You hear that low and slow? You gotta have a little fat. You gotta, have a, you gotta have a little fat. You gotta have a little meat. I I got plenty of it, so we good. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, uh, Lourdes uh, says, uh, Big, Big Poppy said you need some bread for uh, dunking. Yeah, yes. uh, you, you yeah. definitely need some bread for I dunking. Actually, I actually had some bread. I just, this, this is kind of involved, so I wanted to kind of speed things up. But yeah, I would definitely serve this with some garlic bread. So speaking of uh, Lourdes and uh, Big Poppy, um, I birthday prank their son. I did a birthday prank call for their son mm -hmm. tomorrow. And y'all uh, will hear how it goes. Yeah. Little preview. You guys are going to go People on. ask me, uh, "Hey, do you ever get hung up on, or do you ever, you know, get busted?" Uh, the answer to that question tomorrow. tomorrow. That's what we call a tease. <laughs> yeah, right. A low and slow tease. That's a low and slow tease, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and by the way, tomorrow, I, I don't, I don't see how i cannot go in tomorrow and not call curtis low and slow all day. you can't you can't do it on yeah i mean I, i'm gonna have to do it on the air i mean that's just it's a mo and sally show with low and slow <laughs> low and slow on the side all right, guys try this recipe don't let the amount of ingredients you know scare you i used to be like if it's over five i'm out um a lot of the stuff you have right in your house and um it really is good oh and by the way you can store it in the fridge for like five days yeah. You know, if you want to cook it in advance and just slowly warm it up, low and slow, warm it low up. and slow. There it is, low and slow. Low and slow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, tomorrow on the show, we've got the birthday prank call. We've got uh, your chance to win money with the workday payday, seven and eight o'clock and nine o'clock. Uh, just get the keyword for your chance to win a thousand bucks. Hey, you can be like Hugh Vo of Lake Worth. He did it. Yeah, sure. You did. can do it too. You can win the money. And who couldn't use a thousand bucks right now? Uh, we've got uh, four random facts tomorrow, and uh, geez, I guess I should bring some wine. If you're, are you going to bring some stew to work tomorrow for Curtis? For your snacky snack time. And, well, Curtis, I, Curtis likes to take it home because he doesn't always eat in the morning. What is this guy doing out? Oh, I thought no, is that the mean that. one? Yeah, that's that's Foster. Oh, he's watch out! I thought Carlin. I thought uh, Cleavy Cleavy was out. No, he's in the bedroom. Oh, oh you in trouble? You hear what he said, Curtis? I he heard that. Low. That was a cuss word. He said low and slow. <laughs> hey, say hi to everybody. What's up, buddy? Hey, say, say hi to everybody. Mm -mm, I don't trust that demon. Say hi to everybody. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks for joining us. Yep, get the recipe, 1055online.com. Again, try thank it, you. Try it, try it. Doris Italian Market. You guys have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, thank you, Curtis, for your help. Thanks, Curtis. Low and slow. You guys have a great night. Low. Have a low and slow night. There it is. All right. Bye. <laughs>